Hello, uh, my name is Austin George, and I wanted to talk a little bit about something, break away from the original norm. I usually post videos about uh, sermons and stuff, but, you know, I, I am not going to totally get away from that. But, like, in this particular video, I want to talk about uh, something that happened to me when I was six. I was diagnosed with a condition known as Asperger's Syndrome. And one of the things about that disorder is I grew up kind of not always being as able to interact on the best social level with people. And I had some social challenges growing up and uh, struggled kind of with that social awkwardness that is often known with the case of Asperger's Syndrome. And, you know... The reason I created this video was hopefully as a platform to try to express the struggles that go on with such a disorder, but also how how the Word of God can truly benefit each person regardless of whether they have this condition or that condition, or whether they have this life circumstance or not. God's Word is truly applicable to all our lives, and you know, one of the ways I really... I really learned uh, about that was, you know, my dad used to always challenge me growing up. He says, oh, try not to make the conversation all about yourself and try not to just fixate on the things you want to talk, talk about, you know, and just only talk about what you want to talk about. Try to show an interest in other people's lives. And I felt that was very helpful advice that I had gotten from my dad growing up. And uh, I really, really have had to work on that over the years because sometimes one of the struggles with a condition such as Asperger's, which is a mild form of autism, is the, mind's, the mind tends to perseverate and fixate on the things that are predominantly in that person's mind that they want to think about. And so there's, a, there's, in a sense, this gravitational pull to think about that one particular driving focus at that moment. And, you know, that's kind of a hard thing for people with Asperger's Syndrome, is they tend to fixate and overly fixate on something, whether it's an interest or sometimes it's anxiety. And Asperger's can come with a whole different uh, list of symptomatic things, such as hyperfixation on a particular interest, or whether it be maybe overly focusing on some form of anxiety, and that's where the anxiety comes in. And sometimes when you have a mind that tends to fixate on something, we're likely to fixate on certain worries and fears that we have or, or get anxiety. And Asperger's is known for one of those conditions that can create a anxiety kind of disorder. And so... So what I've had to learn over the years, I feel that has been really helpful, is trying to redirect my mind. And just like for one example, Scripture says, let, not, let none of you look not only to his own interests, but to the interest of others. You know, that's what in it's, Paul is talking about, humility. And each of you should not look only to his own interest, but to the interest of others. And I find that verse especially challenging and helpful because sometimes we want to, as human beings in general, tend to like want to think about predominantly themselves and want to think about what they want to think about and want to do what they want to do and want to talk about what they want to talk about. But it's especially challenging for someone with a disorder like Asperger's syndrome. And, you know, there are a few, there are a few symptoms of that, uh, which is hyperfixation on a particular interest, but. And, you know, growing up, I had these fixations that I just couldn't get my mind off. One of them was like drain pipes for some reason. I just found it interesting how water flowed through certain pipes and stuff like that. And then another was dinosaurs for a time. And it just seemed like it changed a bit depending on which phase of life I was in. But as I've grown older... I found that it is possible to actually adapt and to be able to get along quite well with people who do not share that disorder. Because there's oftentimes people with Asperger's refer to people who do not have it as neurotypical. And then they refer to people who have it as Aspies often. And, you know, I think that is one way to describe what it's like living with Asperger's. But I don't think... It's always helpful if we just try to 
say these people over here versus us over here. And so I think that's kind of one of those things that people with Asperger's tend to fall into that trap there where they feel isolated, they feel like they're misunderstood, and therefore everybody out there is uh, those neurotypicals over there. You know, I, they just don't understand it. But, you know, I do think it's very possible to retain one's individual personality. We're all made in the image of God, and we're all different in many different ways. And I think it's very possible to retain that uniqueness without, without and not forfeit that and still be able to healthily interact with people who do not have the disorder. I mean, and that takes a lot of training, and it takes a lot of self-development, and we all as human beings can develop in some way. You know, whether or not this person has Asperger's or not, it's not the point, but we all as human beings can grow and develop and become better for that, you know, and uh, I, I found that uh, the Word of God, the Bible, is very challenging, has been very challenging to me over the years because there's a lot of things that have pushed me in to make improvements that I really... I, there was part of me that just didn't want to change certain things about myself, but, you know, we know that there's some times where we have to make some changes and we have to grow in so many ways. And so that applies for human beings altogether, you know. And none of us really like to change certain things that we're so used to and stuff like that. And I think it's especially hard with people with Asperger's uh, or conditions like mild autism, but I do think it's possible to become functional and to be very functional yet still have that uniqueness about us. I mean, I'm still kind of a quirky guy. I'll, I'll take insect photos all the time. I'll, I'll take nature photos. I'll even photograph the squirrels and stuff like that. I really love taking photos of nature, but you know, there comes a point where we have to balance who we are as individuals. You know, there's that unique personality about us versus there's, uh, there's those things that we know as, uh, there's our unique personality, but then there's ways we can adapt to make those around us feel more comfortable and not, you know, not, not watch what we say. You know, it talks a lot about in the Proverbs of how we're to be careful with what we say. And, you know, that was one of my problems growing up is sometimes I just said what was ever, whatever was on my mind. I didn't even realize how it came across. And I really had to, over these years, really work on improving how and what I said to people. Because sometimes things can be misinterpreted. Sometimes we can say things and not even realize how it's coming across. And so it talks a lot about in the book of Proverbs how we, uh, those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. And it has so many Proverbs on how we are to use our words and we to be careful in how our words come across and affect other people. And so I think that's been another challenge that I've, I have had throughout the years with this diagnosis. But, you know, I find that whatever circumstance you have in life, you can either choose to stay stuck or you can choose to use it to the greater good and to God's glory. I mean, and so God created us all unique. We all have a unique set of circumstances. And so I used to have this mentality, well, like, I'm awkward, I'm weird, I, why can't people just accept me as I am? You know, and then I had to really readdress some things that I was doing that were making people feel uncomfortable. That just seemed so natural. I mean, for example, you know, I would call people multiple times if they did not answer their phone right away. If, uh, and I would get annoyed if they didn't answer their phone right away. And sometimes I would make several calls and it would really get under their skin. And that's one thing that I've had happen to me. And then that's another thing I used to do, uh, in my younger years, in my like earlier twenties and stuff like that. I used to do that kind of stuff. And I, I had to realize, you know, that, well, there's some things that we can accept as just being part of who we are as our unique personality. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay to have a unique personality. It's even okay to be quirky. It's even okay to be an oddball. I mean, but what we got to understand is when we are doing certain things that make other people feel uncomfortable and we're not, and we don't always know what, what will make certain people feel comfortable versus what will 
make them uncomfortable, and so we got to be considerate. I mean, the Bible talks a lot about consideration to how other people feel, and not to just needlessly do things that upset people. You know, of course, we're going to try to do that. You know, we wouldn't want people to do things that would make us feel uncomfortable. We would want people to treat us in a way that made us feel easy, uh, easy to be around them. And so, I mean, and I think that's one of the struggles that people with Asperger's sometimes get the idea that making changes to themselves is changing who they are as a person. Well, which is not the case, because we're always changing. As human beings, we're always changing and developing in some way. I mean, for good or for bad. I mean, and so human life, we have our unique personalities, but then we have, we're often shaped by our circumstances, and we're changing all the time in many ways. We're like, if we're going through this over here, we're going to react a certain way than if we're not going through that situation. And so circumstances can play a large role into how we react and respond to certain situations. But, you know, I used to be of the notion that, well, you know, I don't want to change these things about myself is because I just feel that's how I am, you know, and that's a lot of that's a lot of times what people are saying is they say, well, it's just how I am. Accept it. I mean, you don't love me if you don't accept me for how I am. I mean, and it's like when we look at something like that, we just got to understand there's certain personality traits that we have that are unique, God-given personality traits being made in the image of God. And then there are our rough edges, let's just say. Let's just say that the rough edges, sometimes we identify ourselves with the rough edges, and we think that's just a part of how we are. But, you know, it's kind of like, it, that's true with everybody. Everybody, in fact. Sometimes we say, well, I can't give up this. This is just how I've always been. This is just what I know. This is just how I am. And, you know, that's a destructive mentality, saying, like, if it's something that the Bible addresses as something that we need to change... And we hold on to it and identify too much with that. We're going to start building our identity on foolish traits that we have built up over the years or sins that we are entangled in. And God wants to give us freedom. God wants us to fulfill our true potential. God wants to chip away those rough edges and, and shape us into all he created us to be. And that does not mean he takes away our unique personality. He just refines us and makes us more reflective of who he is, his character, his life. You know, because Christ was, Christ was full of truth. Christ was full of compassion. Christ was, Christ was gentle, yet Christ was bold when he needed to be bold about stuff. And so it's like, it, when, when a lot of people misunderstand when they, they hear, well, God wants to make you like Jesus Christ, they think, well, that will take away from my unique identity. Because people have gotten in their minds that uh, uh, they are a certain way and that becoming more like Christ will detract from their God-given personhood, which is not the case. It's kind of like this. You have a piece of cheese. And it has mold growing on it. And you're just like, well, I'm going to cut out some of that mold to like make the cheese better. And so it will be fit for consumption. And so the cheese, let's say, protests and says, don't take that out. That's a part of who I am. You know, the, the mold has worked its way through the cheese, but the mold is not a part of the cheese. The mold is growing on the cheese. So it feels like, this is just an analogy, but it may feel like that mold is just a part of how it is. And that's not the case. And sometimes we identify too much with our toxic traits with things that we do that are either outright sin or just obnoxious behaviors that we have slowly acquired over the years. And God wants to take us, our unique God-given person personality, he wants to refine us so that we'll be more like Christ in our character. That means more compassionate, more patient, more gentle, more kind, more, more able to handle stress without responding wrongly, you know, and a lot of non-Christians may say, well, you know, if he makes me more like Jesus Christ, if he, if I chose to follow Christ and he made me more like himself, I'd lose myself. I'd become a robot. That's not the case. 
That's not the case. Because Christianity is not some kind of cyber, cybernetic, uh, robotic life. It's, it's a life where we are, as unique individuals, fulfilling God's true purpose for our lives. And we're overflowing with that joy. And we're doing it from the heart. We're not just doing it as robotic lip service, like, praise the Lord. It's not all about that. It's about true heartfelt worship for God, true heartfelt. Uh, it comes from a place of the heart where we're trying to become more like Christ in our actions and attitudes and behaviors. And if it's coming across as a robotic kind of function, then something's going wrong there. That means we've missed something somewhere. I hope you found this encouraging uh, and God bless.